Hello, welcome to Anson Griffith's vocational series in MATLAB tutorials. Today we'll be looking at principal component analysis uh, for images. So, just to start, so I've made out a couple of PowerPoint slides. Uh, most of this stuff came from the the website linked to here. So, just to give due credit to that, I you just want to assert where I got stuff from. Okay, so let's look at the slides. Uh, some of this stuff is fairly technical and you're not going to get it if you're new to this, you're not going to get it in one day or one view. So the very first one is a fairly decent link and that would be a complete layman's view to a uh, PCA. There's no maths at all involved at all. The others um, you know, do various attempts very good that's why they're there a principle called analysis and the last one down here is a lecture for PCA compression specifically for images uh, fairly technical so your maths are going to be reasonable so just a flow chart for PCA and uh, we'll explain some of the terminology later on we standardize the data in other words subtract the mean from the relevant row or mean centering you get the covariance matrix you perform SVD singular value decomposition on the covariance matrix that you formed. You dig out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors from that, and from that, from the eigen well, the uh, the eigenvalues will give you the principal components, and then you select the relevant number of principal components, and you get the data back using the eigenvectors. Okay, so let's go on. Either it means nothing, or it's perfectly sensible. So, what we want to do is, in PCAs, if you looked at some of those YouTube tutorials, we want to try and remove the dimensionality, in other words, make it smaller. And you want to try and get the principal components. Okay, and this, as I said before, I'm not really, I'm going to mention principal components, but I'm not going to go into great detail. So you'll have to look at some of the other links just to get a better idea. So you want to transform the matrix X into a matrix Y that will retain most of the information that's all that you originally had. Okay. So the first thing you do is uh, you want to get um, the mention in this slide. I'm not going to read it line by line. You get the eigenvectors for the principal components, uh, the eigenvector and the associated eigenvalues. So the eigenvectors are in, eff in effect lines of best fit, for want of a better word, and they're also orthogonal to each other. So this you can understand even in two-dimensional or three-dimensional space how things can be orthogonal to each other or at right angles. But in our example that we're going to use of the GPO, there's 512. So it's very hard to explain to somebody new to it how you can have 512 orthogonal vectors to each other but that's what you have indeed so we go on again so we get the variance covariance matrix so the more um, just to try and explain what the variance covariance matrix is so if things covary that means they move in tandem so and what we'd like to do is we'd like to make uh, so this just a measure and the variance would be uh, the importance if things if the variance of something is quite small it's usually just noise but the variance is quite large it usually implies some sort of uh, link or dimensionality in that first YouTube video that I mentioned where your man explained to view uh, teapot you can see that he draws two axes are talking to each other and the variance of the uh, of one of the first one is very large and that gives the most information about the teapot and then one that is orthogonal to it or at right angles the dement the uh, variance isn't as large but it gives a fairly a fair lot of information about it so we get the variance covariance matrix i'm not going to go into the maths too much the matrix is there that's where the mouse is pointed there. It's just a device to get the covariance matrix. Uh, so just we get the covariance matrix Y and you maximize the signal measured by the variance 
and minimize the covariance between the variables. So you want the variance to be as large as possible, that's along the leading diagonal, and you want the covariance to be as small as possible, preferably zero. So if, and then the very last line down here, if we can choose the transformation matrix P in such a way that CY is diagonal, that should be C subscript Y, by the way, you would have achieved your objective. Uh, we see the MATLAB code. I've got a covariance matrix, you know, nothing there. Uh, and from the covariance matrix, um, you want to diagonal CY. So that if it's CY is diagonal, we'll have achieved our objective. Okay, we've mentioned that before. So go on to the next slide. And how do we get these um, diagonal matrices? You do it by singular value decomposition. Okay. Now I'm, again, I used different. I used E D E transpose R squared though. Uh, credit on the first page where I got most of the information from. So it's really uh, S is the eigenvalues, and E and ET are the eigenvectors, and the eigenvalues that we get, they give the principal components. So and they are in descending order. So the first uh, value that we're going to dig out from S is gives the most information. The second is the second most information, etc., etc., etc. In our example, we have 512 rows, so we're going to have 512 eigenvectors, 512 eigenvalues. The sum of the eigenvalues equals the sum of the variance, and we'll see that the first, well, I was going to say the first 10, but really the first 5 or 6 or 7 uh, eigenvalues give the most, give a lot of the information. Okay, so. Uh, we get that the SVD stands for singular value decomposition. Uh, you get the orthonormal matrix E, that's I mentioned the eigenvectors. They're, so they're orthonormal, so they're at right angles to each other and they're um, standardized as well. Uh, there's the uh, SVD, the matrix S. And you can see here, just by the way, I just cut and pasted from MATLAB. You can see the first one is 9 by 10 to the minus 5, more or less. 1.4 by 10 to the minus 5. So we've diagonalized it. The eigenvalues go along the leading diagonal. And I just did columns 1 to 7 just to see, or just to give the viewer some idea of what's going on. Now, I've plotted the variances. So there's the eigenvalue 1. I can value 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. I only went to 30 or so, but you can see, relatively speaking, uh, 30 is here. Now, it's not, this is just the dangers of having scales. I suppose I could have logged them, but you see here, it's by 10 to the 11. So, even though it's a small number, it's by 10 to the 11. So, it's, it's not as close to zero as one may think. So, what I did then was. I got the variance of the first one over the total variance. So the total variance, uh, sorry, the first eigenvalue divided by the sum of the eigenvalues, uh, the first eigenvalue divided by uh, the total variance gives you 94%. Add the first two, 97%. Add the first three, 98%. First four, 99.15. First five, 99.49 etc etc and just to kind of get down to here when I got to the first 15 uh, it was 99.951 okay again slight repeat of what I did the diagonal are non-negative they're in decreasing order okay so again what we do then is, once we got the singular values decomposition, we want to turn them back I into um, some meaning information. And we do that is to relate the SVD of ZTZ back to the change of basis by that. And we do that by generating a V transpose X. And if we want to cover the original data, we simply compute. Okay. So, um, this is about image compression using PCA. So we have these formulas derived before, and we just want to run. Sorry, I'm just going to skip this slide a little bit. 
So the whole idea is, as I said, I'm repeating myself here, is to use the first 10 components, the first 20, the first 30, the first 40. So I'll just leave that up for a second. And this is a, I might hold it here and I might go and look at the code here, just, just because the, no point in talking about this until we run the code. So I have the script. Uh, here I've read in an uh, image of the GPO in Dublin. I've got the size of the GPO. I've converted it on line 9. I converted it to double because remember it's U and 8 when you read them in and the allowable values are only 0 to 255. Uh, actually I just noticed line 12 was a repeat. Didn't mean to do that. Anyway, so we get the mean the row mean and this is where we said we standardized are we uh, we took away the mean of from each row and this was a sort of standardized device it's just to try and get the variation down into something relatively small so that we can get we don't the SVD doesn't spend hours and hours and hours trying to do mad maths so uh, there on line 20 we got the matrix Z and then on line 21 we got the covariance matrix. On line 27 uh, we got U, S and V, fairly standard notation, and S is the eigenvalues, U and V are uh, one is the transpose of the other and they're the eigenvectors. On line 28 we dug out the variances uh, and then we got a screen plot of the variances. That's where I got on that slide. I remember I had the first 30. I remember I said 30 looked like zero, but it wasn't. Uh, that far loop there, I'd say there's a better way of doing it, but what I did was I was trying to get the first eigenvalue over the total variances to some of the first two eigenvalues over the total variance, to some of the first three eigenvalues over the total variance, etc. Uh, on this one here, I just took the first 40 principal components. Uh, that's there. You see, remember, V was the eigenvectors, so all the rows, columns 1 to 40. And I got the matrix Y and I projected um, the that onto the principal components. So I, I took those 40 and then I took it by the matrix X, which is up here somewhere. Let me just find it. Uh, there, that's the uh, the mean centered on line 18. Um, and uh, oh yeah, so I got some sort of compression ratio there, and I com then I had to convert back to the original basis on line 48, and then I had to remove the mean centering on line 49. And on line 50, I showed the reconstructed image. What I did here was, on lines 52 to 69, I got princip I got the first principal component, the sum of the first 11, the, f 20, the sum of the first 21, the sum of the first 31, the sum of the first 41, and I got, I think that's five images, and... I displayed the five images. Now, obviously, the first one isn't going to be the first principal component on its own isn't going to be great. The first and and the uh, the sum of the first eleven uh, would be quite good. Twenty one would even be better. Thirty one even better again. What I did on line sixty five was I should have written a little function, but I didn't. But I got the mean square error, so I got the original image that I read in, and the reconstructed one, and I got the mean square error for each of them. And as you see when we run it, um, you know the mean square error drops as the more principal components you take. I think I'll just publish this.
Okay, so we've generated the HTML. I've gone through the code. Hopefully I've explained stuff to you, I don't know. There's the original image. Now there is a little bit of blockiness around here, which is a little source of worry. Don't quite know why that happened. Now there, I've shown that in the PowerPoint slide, first principal component, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, etc. And then I got the variance for the first one over the total variance, 94%, the sum of the first two, 97, the sum of the first three, 98, the sum of the first four, 99.15, etc. There's 512 rows, so you're going to get 512 eigenvalues or 512 principal components uh, and there is the plot of the first 30 okay as we saw on the slide uh, a reconstructed image from 40 you can see this the blockiness and the artifacts are noticeable enough there but still you got the main information out. There's my loop doing 1, 11, 21, 31, etc. There's the mean square error. So it's, um, you can see 6.84, 3.0, 2.35, 1.77 uh, by 10 to the, by 10. Okay, there's the first principal component, barely recognizable. There's the first 11 summarized, so beginning to take shape a little bit. There's the f uh, 1 to 21 combined. There's 1 to 31. And there's 1 to 41 combined. Okay, So you can see that the more principal components we take. Now just go back to the slide here. So what sort of compression should we achieve? Well, uh, just we're there. So what we say, um, this is referring to the first 40 principal components. But the number of columns needed was um, 40 and 40. That's the 40 eigenvectors and the transpose of the 40 eigenvectors and the one for the diagonal matrix. So that we're, um, there's a mistake there. Sorry, there's a mistake. 40 plus 40 plus 1 equals 81. Uh, down from 512 and 512 I had it right here as convert 81 so we have a 6.31 compression okay so hope that helps thanks very much for listening